Hey guys, it's Sam for Digital Meat, and in this tutorial video, I'm going to be talking about Ryzen UV, formerly Unfold 3D. Before I begin, I just want to explain the name change and clear up any confusion. Remy Arquia is the creator and developer of Unfold 3D, now known as Ryzen UV. Previous versions of Unfold 3D were being published by a company called Polygonal Design. Remy stopped his business relationship with Polygonal Design at the end of uh, 2015 and Polygonal Design uh, are still publishing the older version 9 currently. Remy is the owner of the Unfold 3D brand and the Unfold 3D brand has never been transferred to Polygonal Design. So if you are looking for the latest and greatest version of Unfold 3D, to avoid confusion, it is now called Ryzen 3D and can be only found at worldwideweb.ryzen-lab.com. I'll put a link in the description of this video. Okay, now that's out of the way, let's talk about Ryzen UV. There are plenty of new features in Ryzen UV and I'll be covering them over a series of tutorials in the coming weeks. But first, I want to deal with getting our geometry out of Cinema 4D and into Ryzen UV. You may be thinking, this, you know, it seems pretty obvious. You just export an OBJ or an FBX from Cinema 4D. Well, let's have a look at that. Okay, so I've got Cinema 4D open here. I've got a cube in the scene, and that's what I'll be using just to keep things simple. The way that I'd go about this, uh, getting this into uh, Ryzen UV would be to go to File, I make sure my cube selector, go to File, Export, FBX, and then go to a uh, location on my desktop. Let's uh, just dump it in Ryzen UV in my Imports folder. And we'll call this unt Untitled 1. It'll ask for the FBX settings. So I'm going to say Selection Only. There are no cameras or anything like that. Tracks, blah, blah, blah. All of this is fine. So I'm just going to say OK to this and it's exported this model now. So now what we do is open Ryzen UV. Okay, so now that's open. We go to Files, uh, Load. It will want us to go to the place where we saved our FBX and uh, import it. And as you can see, this is the 3D view and this is the UV view. And you can see that it says Tile. Uh, we could we could probably move that out of the way, but it's fine for the time being. And just to uh, quickly show you, um, select edge mode. I'm going to control A and then cut everything. And then I'm going to choose, um, uh, where's my islands? There's my island hotkey. So I'm going to control A. So I've got all my islands selected now. Then I'm going to press U to unfold and then P to pack. And this is the way it's arranged on our uh, on our UV space here. So now that's done, I'm going to save. So that's going to save over the original FBX. I can close this. And in Cinema 4D now, I can go up here, File, Merge Objects, open up this FBX, and it'll ask me how I want to import it. Press OK. And I'll have a second object called Cube. So I can, you know, if I wanted to get rid of my original cube, I'm just going to hide it. And just to make sure that he did actually uh, do its UVing, I'm going to go into the UV edit and have a look. And as you can see, you can see its UVs are arranged here. Uh, it might be able be able to uh, see that a bit more clearly if I select them all. And there you go. There's our UV space. Okay, so we did what needed to we needed to do, but there was uh, a lot of back and forth. And if I decided to make changes to my model, all of that will have to be repeated. But there is an easier way. So if we go to uh, the Ryzen Lab website and you go up here to download and then go across to Cinema 4D, 3DS Max and Blender Bridges and go there, there will be a download for a bridge between Cinema 4D and um, Ryzen UV. So here we are, here's the bridge. So you go to the website, you can download it and it installs like any other Cinema 4D plugin you put it in the plugins folder and then when you open Cinema 4D it will be loaded in. Okay so let's get back to our startup view and let's get rid of this cube 
Now, I've already got the plugin installed, uh, so I'm actually just going to make a button to make it easier to use. And you can do that by going to the window, customization, go into uh, customize palettes, and then in this window, we'll search for the bridge. Now, the bridge is called uh, U, uh, U3D because this bridge was actually made for uh, the older Unfold 3D. But don't worry about that, its main functions work, and I will talk about that a little bit more in a minute. So you can drag this up and make this button here, and now we can close this. Uh, if you want this button to be here every time you open Cinema 4D, what you can do is go to Window Customization, and you can say uh, Save as Startup Layout. So now, uh, when we open up, we've got two startups now, so we've got Startup User, Startup. So this will be here when we start up. Okay, so now we have our button set up, let's have a look at the options. The options can be accessed by holding down shift and clicking on the button. So let's do that. And it will bring up this little dialog here. So what does this stuff mean? Well the, well, the first thing we need to do is set the path to the Ryzen UV executable file. So the plugin knows what to run, uh, what executable to run on export. So it's asking for the path here. So if we just open this up, you can navigate to your PC, C drive, program files, and then go find the Ryzen lab folder, go into there, and then select this EXE and open. So that will be in here now, and that's exactly what you want. So we can save that. Um, sorry, I'm just gonna open the options again. So we've got our path in there now. Something else to note is that this exploded radio button here and this auto dim currently do not work. And that is because when this plugin was built, it was for version 9 of Unfold 3D. Version 9 could not recognize an OBJ's group, which brings me to another point about this plugin. It exports only as an OBJ. I have been in contact with the creator of this plugin and he tells me he's updating the C4D bridge plugin over the coming weeks. Uh, when it is released, I'll do another video covering the changes, but one of those changes should be that it exports as FBX. Okay, so let's go, now that we've got all that out of the way, let's go over the, uh, the stuff that does matter. Okay, so we've got this new UVW. So what does that actually mean? So if I uh, just close this a sec with this unchecked new UVW and uh, make our cube editable it will create a uv for it so what i'm going to do is just to show you is go into the uv edit i'm going to choose all of its polygons and i'm going to choose a projection so if you go down here and go to projection you can choose cubic cubic 2 box shrink whatever you like i'm going to cu choose cubic 2 so this is our new uv so let's go back to the um startup and now if I select my cube and hit this button, you'll notice that Unfold 3D opens up automatically and uh, it's got our box here in the 3D view and it's brought across our UVs from Cinema 4D. Now what if you wanted a new, completely fresh UVs? That's what this button does. So, oh, uh, sorry, shift, click again to bring up the options. And if I click new UVs, and then save this, and then have my cube selected and export. It'll open up Ryzen UV again, and you'll notice that all the UVs have been cleared. So it basically ignores the UVs that you've set in Cinema 4D. If you just want to start from scratch, that's what it will do. Okay, so let's have a look at the next thing. Uh, we've got this auto close here. Again, I'll uh, show you what that does. In fact, what I'm going to do is turn that off and then save. So I've turned auto close off. If I select the cube and press this button, it should open up Ryzen UV again. And we've got this. And again, what I'm going to do is um, select all my edges and cut. And I'm going to then go into my island mode and control A. So it selects everything. Then just press U to unfold and P to pack. Oh, where is it gone? Here we go. <laughs> there we go. Um, so that's now done. Now, if I go to files and press save, okay, it saved that, great. So I'm just going to minimize this for a minute. Let's check our cube. 
go to UV edit, and you can see that it's brought across our UVs from Ryzen UV, um, but it's still open. So what this actually does is, uh, let's get back to our start again. It's probably pretty obvious by now, but this closes Ryzen UV after itself. So let's click this on and save. Select our cube again, press our button. This will bring it across. Same deal again. I'm going to cut, and then I'm going to choose uh, UV Islands and Control A, U, P, and I think we can... Um, I'm not sure why it zoomed right out. And there we go, it's there. But this time when we go here and press save, Ryzen UV closes and we get our cube back. Now you may notice that we've got this extra tag here, it's a normal tag. And that is due to the fact that um, Ryzen UV is exporting an OBJ. You will get this, but um, there's no harm in it being there. In fact, you can remove it if you like, it's not a problem. But when the uh, plugin gets updated, that won't happen anymore. Okay, let's have a look at the next thing. We've got um, no materials. And basically, all that means is when you export your OBJ, it doesn't take your materials across with it. I personally don't know why you'd want to take materials, because the whole point of um, UV unwrapping an object is so you can texture it. Maybe you're doing light maps. I don't know. But um, I leave this ticked on. No materials keep history. Now, as you've seen a minute ago, when I export it, I'm going to take off this new UV so it just retains what it's got. When you export this and bring it back, it overwrites the object that was in Cinema 4D. So I've got a cube in Cinema 4D. I, I use the button to export it to Ryzen UV, do what I've got to do, save. It sends it back to Cinema 4D and replaces this cube here. But if we say keep history, we can get a copy. So now when I select the cube and send it across, this will open up. I can do my work on it. And then when I hit save, Ryzen UV closes and I get a duplicate of my cube and my original cube is automatically hidden. You can see the traffic lights have been turned to red there. So that's what all of these do. And I think you'll agree that doing it this way is a lot lot quicker than exporting a um you know an fbx through you know the export menu doing all your options sending it to a folder then opening ryzen uv go finding it in that folder do what you got to do save it back to that folder and then merge your object in all of that is taken care of with this button you just press the button do what you got to do save it closes and it gets sent right back so yeah, I just wanted to cover that quickly because this plugin is brilliant, to be honest. And when it's updated, it's going to be even better. So I just wanted to talk about transferring data in and out of Cinema 4D to Ryzen UV um, to get that out of the way, really. And the upcoming tutorials will be all about the features of uh, Ryzen UV. Okay, that's about it. For my viewers on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell to get tutorial notifications. You can also check me out at digitalmeet.uk where you can filter my tutorials by category. You can also follow me on social media, links in the description and the footer of my website. If you'd like to support Digital Meet, this can be done via Patreon or the support page on the website. But if you'd like to support Digital Meet and get extra tutorial content, you can purchase the Prime membership in the store at digitalmeet.uk. For winding down, I have a second channel called Beef Doctor where I do game streams. Link in the description and the footer of my website. Okay, thanks for watching guys. Bye!